Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison, you're watching Unfazed, and today I'm going to be going over the Science Olympiad Gravity Vehicle Rules for the 2021-2022 to Science Olympiad season, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. First, let's take a look at some of the key aspects from the 2020-2021 to Science Olympiad season. Mainly, they restricted the weight of the gravity vehicle to 2 kilograms. The ramp had to fit within a 1 meter high by half a meter by half a meter width and length. The distance only was used for scoring, so time wasn't used. There were three official runs, two of which counted towards the final score, and there were no obstacles or obstructions on the track. So now let's take a brief look at the 2021 to 2022 Science Olympiad rule changes. If you've already skimmed through the rules, then you might notice that there's a whole lot of similarities to what we saw last year. And if you thought that, you are 100% correct. In fact, you can actually use your gravity vehicle from last year as long as you change the small small rule change they added here which was to remove your dowel and replace it with a jumbo paper clip to use as a measuring point and in fact they made this so easy that the jumbo paper clip does not even need to be in the front of your vehicle for it to be uh, for, for your car to be considered legal it could be anywhere as long as it's easily accessible if I am interpreting the rules correctly so that was the only major change to the construction parameters for gravity vehicle in the 2021 to 2022 season. But if we look back at the practice log, so now we're going down to section 4. Similar to Mousetrap Vehicle and almost every single build event, they are now requiring students to input any information regarding 3D printed parts, laser cut parts, or parts made using a CNC machine. So... If you have not watched my Master of Vehicle video, I highly recommend you do so because I go a little bit more in detail on what this rule means. But very briefly, the way I am interpreting this rule is that this information does not have to be in the exact same table that has your uh, that has your uh, testing parameters for your practice log. I believe it could be on a separate piece of paper as long as you explicitly say that, you know, this is all the information for either the 3D printed parts or laser cut parts or CNC parts that I have. And you, you put all that required information and then you just staple that paper to your practice log table. Because it doesn't really make sense to keep repeating the 3D printed information, laser cut information on every single run. So now let's take a look at where the rules actually take a significant turn from last year. So specifically, if we look at the track, there is now a 3 8 inch hardwood round dowel that will span the entire track perpendicular to the center line that connects the starting point from the target point. So if you're having a little bit of a hard time understanding this, I have a track diagram that I drew out that will help better explain this point. So in just a minute, I'll get to that, but I just want to explain what this has in terms of implications for this season. So because this, uh, this dowel rod, if you look at the rules, it is one meter from the starting point, but they also say it, it extends, I believe, half a meter uh, half a meter towards the edge of the track on both sides. And it also says in the rules that the track, at minimum, has to be, I believe, one meter long. So because, essentially, in the worst case scenario, this hardwood around dowel spans the entire length of the track, I believe the intention of this hardwood round dowel is to sort of make like a speed bump, per se, in the track and this is the obstacle you have to overcome I don't believe you're able to uh, to curve around the dowel because this dowel can obviously extend to extend um, the entire length of the track so I believe the only way to get past this dowel is to go over it or figure out some other method which I will be going over in future videos but please understand that this this rule is is attempting to put a speed bump in the middle of track as an obstacle for everyone to overcome. And then if we look at the 
uh, track continued. I don't know why I have that bullet point repeating. But if we look at the track continued, they also talk about the track and tape dimensions. Um, and then they also put the target distances, which instead of 9 to 12, it's like less than 5 now. And then scoring is obviously the same as last year. Alright, so here's a track diagram I was talking about a second ago. Basically, you have a starting point and you have a target point. And one meter forward from the starting point is a 3 8 inch round dowel. And they specify that this dowel has to be a hardwood dowel. And I believe that this uh, specification is to make sure that students are not just brute forcing their way through the dowel and then breaking that dowel as they go through. And I believe if push comes to shove and a lot of people are adopting the idea of, you know, barging through and breaking the dowel as a means to get towards a target point, um, they might uh, instead change hardwood dowel to like a metal rod. So it's, it's basically impossible to break through that with just the gravity car itself. So... Again, if we look at the track diagram, I put this in the worst case scenario where the dowel rod or the round dowel spans the entire track and there's no way to get to the target point without going over the 3 8 inch dowel directly. So I believe this again is the intention of Science Olympiad and you are supposed to go over the round dowel as if it's a speed bump. If you are having a little bit difficulty understanding, you know, or, or thinking of ways to perhaps go over the round dowel consistently and get to the target point consistently, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel because I will be going over some ways in which you can do that. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time. If you enjoy the video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay unfazed.